Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage, and welcome to a day that's pretty nice out, but it's a little windy and chilly for the middle of April. Uh, apparently it was actually snowing here in Pennsylvania a little today. Uh, of course, nothing stuck to anything, but apparently there were some flurries. I don't know. I was inside at work, got told about it later. So anyhow, guys, we're going to jump right into what we're getting into tonight, and we're going to be working on our second gen truck. Um, Veronica, as you guys know, if you've been following the videos, this is my first pickup truck. I love this truck. It's a V8, four-wheel drive, um, five-speed uh, manual transmission, uh, sport off-road package. Um, it's a 2001 with a 5.2 liter Magnum engine. So first things first, I call it a second gen because as far as I'm concerned, this is the second generation of the Dodge Ram. Just like with the yellow truck, it was the first generation of the Dodge Ram from like 81 to 93. I know being most of you guys being diesel enthusiasts, um, me as well, we often consider that to be how we judge these trucks, you know, with the uh, VE pump first gen trucks, the P pump second gen trucks, and then you had the um, VP44 second gen trucks, so on and so forth. But really, as far as I'm concerned, it works both ways um, because when those engine changes were made, they actually were changing the body styles of the truck as well. Well, obviously not P-Pump the VP44. They just did a little interior upgrade in 98. But anyhow, um, as far as the bodies of the trucks goes, they all line up other than, you know, in a gas version or a 1500, I should say, you could get this body style up until 01. This is the last year for it. Then they switched to the third gen body in 02. But for the heavy duty trucks, it took a year later, um, which I believe is actually the case with the third to fourth gen uh, switch as well. So whenever I say first gen, second gen, usually I'm talking about the body of the truck because I am not only a uh, diesel enthusiast, I like the gas stuff too. So anyway, like I said, this is my first truck. I've often stated before, I want to get her back into tip top shape. She doesn't run the best anymore. Um, I think she's got a little mist to her and all that, which needs to be addressed. But one major problem with her is what we're going to be taking care of today, um, or at least beginning to take care of. And that's in this box right here. So we'll get that opened up and uh, see what we got. So there we have it. We have long tube headers for Veronica. So these are from DNA Motoring. Honestly, they are just like Amazon, eBay headers. Um, they are long tube headers with a Y pipe here in the back. So these are basically equivalent to what is already on the truck. So if we look at the truck now, it already has long tube headers on it. Now these are ceramic coated, or they were ceramic coated, um, pace setter headers. The reason I got pace setter headers, um, even though they're well known to be not the best quality, they were the only way you could get long tubes on this truck when I did it. Um, at this point, it's probably like 12 years ago. Needless to say, they're completely rotted out. They're just they're bad they're beyond repair so we got new headers we're also going to be putting a whole new exhaust system on the truck um originally i had this truck running uh true duels with an h pipe that i made um and that all sounded great but just for the ease of install and all that i'm going to go back to you know into a single muffler and to dual pipes that that being said, what I did previously was I actually cut this Y apart and just made two pipes. And then the last time I did it, I kind of half-assed it, to be honest. And I just, I'm going to replace it, start fresh, and all that. So the nice thing about these headers is they're supposed to be stainless. Now, like I said, they're like Amazon, eBay headers. So we got our trusty magnet to find out. Because uh, if any of you know anything about metal... Stainless can come in a 400 or a 300 uh, series. A 400 is typically what your exhausts are. This specifically said it was 304. So that being said, if it's good 304 stainless, it shouldn't be magnetic and that's magnetic. Um, that kind of sucks that it is. Okay, well, so the tubes appear to be legit 304 stainless. They're not magnetic but the flanges themselves are, 
which isn't a big deal because the flanges shouldn't rot out. No, no water should be sitting on them. They should dry right off when you start the truck. And really, ours are a little cruddy down there, but they're still in good shape. So we got new long tube headers for the truck. I'm excited. Um, I've always loved the sound of this truck. Uh, when I had these long tubes on here, you knew it was me. Everybody knew when you heard this truck coming who it was. It was loud. It's always been muffled. Um, it has two MagnaFlow mufflers on it and all that. Um, but like I said, true dual exhaust with a H pipe that was custom made and then half assed after that. So anyway guys that's our plan we're going to get the exhaust back on the truck make her sounding good get all the exhaust leaks wrapped up all kind of stuff like i said i'm interested to see how bad these headers are i've been under there i think there's a couple of really big holes but anyway we're going to find out for sure so let's get the old exhaust and old headers out and get this new fresh stainless stuff in i'm excited that they are actually like the tubes aren't magnetic so maybe these things will last forever at least the life of the truck which as far as I'm concerned, it's gonna stay with me forever. So let's get to it and get this exhaust off. Well, I guess before we take the old exhaust off, I'll give you a few sound bites so you can hear this thing and uh, we can hear the improvement when everything's all said and done. So our exhaust is off and I know what you're thinking, ah, it doesn't look too bad, it's not in too bad shape and it's not, it's not that awful bad but like I said a few years ago I just really half assed it, I mean this is maybe five years ago, I can't remember, uh, quite a while ago just half assed it one night and get an exhaust on there and this is what we got, all these clamps, you know I just welding whatever I could find to a clamp, um, oh here don't have anything welded on the uh, top because I got, was able to get the bottom. Uh, like I said, just really half assing it. And I uh, actually reused the old mufflers, all that kind of stuff. As you can see, they're not perfect. Here's the H pipe I had made way before then, I think. I can't remember if I redid that too or not. That didn't, uh, didn't turn out too bad. Here's our one collector because it real tight in there the front drive shaft so as you can see like this mark here that's actually from one of the weights on the drive shaft beating on that thing for years um i noticed it when i installed them before and you know it never really put a full hole in there just dented it in so we went with it but you can see one crack right there in our header um uh, look at i don't know if you guys can see that let me get a light and looking inside there look at that that pipe is all the way gone so is the one below it the whole collector in there is just open <laughs> that's why uh that's why this thing kind of sounds like a nascar it's just uh yeah a lot of holes a lot of holes so now um what is going to be the more difficult part i think uh just for getting bolts out and all that they're kind of not that easy to get to it's not like they're hard to get to it's just a matter of you don't have the the room to really spin your wrench on some of these uh 
I think on this side we had to pull the starter when I put these in but with that collector out we might not have to but we'll get our our intake off and try and pull these old pace uh, pace pace shitter headers off and before we do that, I just want you guys to see, uh, you know, you see all these guys with these big, tough diesel trucks and they got their cute little train horns. Um, these are real train horns. Uh, these are Leslie K3 LAs. I can't remember the designation. It's been a long time. Um, these are real. I think they were off like an Amtrak or something. Uh, before we get the exhaust on, these are definitely going to come out. Uh, I don't know that we'll ever redo them, but they've been on there for years and haven't worked for quite a while so we'll get them out and uh yeah like i said all you guys with your cute little train horns why don't you step up with the big boys So our headers are out. Um, honestly, it was not as bad as I was thinking. Um, the hardest part was uh, some of the bolts you can't even get the box end of the wrench on, or you can, you know you can't get a ratcheting box wrench on for sure. But also like the heads of some of these bolts are just kind of shot. Um, that one actually doesn't look too bad. But I had to actually there were a three eighths head or they're supposed to be. I had to end up using like a nine six or not nine sixteenths nine millimeter to get them to even to move on some of them. Still have to clean up the um, gasket surfaces, but in there we're ready to go. I did have to drop the starter to pull this header out. Uh, this side came out this way. The passenger side went down. So, oh, I can't wait to get these in. But looking at our headers, um, yeah, so this is the one we cut and already looked at the collector. Um, yeah, not. I know you guys can't see in, there, but not actually too bad on this one. Um, other than in the collector, which we already saw was a complete pile of crap on the on the driver's side here. We can see a crack there. We can assume we got the hole like on the um, the other collector. Yeah, and then this this tube's cracked also. Look inside there. You can see all the um, you know corrosion or uh, scale, I should say. Looking underneath. Yeah, so that, that tube's completely shot, if you guys can see that hole, a big old hole. So we can assume this entire collector is all rotted out. So if we look inside this collector, um, I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera. Yep, there you go, there's some light. Uh, yeah, that's it's even with all that scale, but yeah, these are just shot too. So like I said, all the tubes are cracked and all that, um, all just destroyed. We do have to get the O2 sensor off this side. We only have one O2 sensor on this truck because, whoa, because years ago when I originally put the headers on there, I actually put that crossover pipe, like I said, is on here. Um, this piece right here. Originally, I did have that on the headers. So uh, when I did that, the factory cat or cats, I think it was two cats, um, we're actually on there and then we have a little O2 sensor for behind there. All that O2 sensor was for on these trucks was to say, hey, the cat's there and it's working. But with this being a classically tagged vehicle, we have no more emissions inspection. Um, not that it was ever an issue because all that little box did was just fool the computer so the light didn't come on. But that is still installed. So uh, we have to get this. This O2 sensor was disconnected. I don't know why that is. I'll have to look at that. But uh Anyway, we'll get our surfaces cleaned up and we will get our new shiny headers in there and uh, 
make the rest of the engine bay look like even more of a pile of crap. Uh, yeah, this thing has seen better days. Uh, as you guys can see from the grill, uh, we had a little heat in here at one time. The mice like to chew the crossover tube in the back um, that connected the fuel rails. And well, this truck has always started. Um, now it starts a little rougher because of you know the headers and all that. Um, also, I did find this vacuum port doesn't have anything going to it, so we're gonna have to plug that. But anyway. Um, the mice had chewed that crossover tube. I started the truck and the fuel pump come on. I started the truck. I'm like, man, I smell fuel. As soon as I said it, the thing went up. Um, but we got it out. I mean, we, our grill is going to need some attention. Some of our wires, but didn't cause too much damage. So anyway, we'll get this all cleaned up and uh, have a shiny new set of headers in there. So guys, it is much, much later. Um, been having some issues. So our header is installed. If you look at it, she's looking good, but getting it there was a struggle. So if you guys look down here, right there, as you can see, hopefully, little focus, focus. Yeah, so our motor mount is out of its uh, holder or whatever. I had to loosen the motor mount and jack the engine over. Um, in order to get the header in. I also kind of beat the side in a little bit down here to try and clearance it, just trying to get it in. What it was is the the pipes come out and and even though the, they seem like almost the same as the pace header, like I when I saw these, I figured out oh, it's just a knockoff pace header, but they're stainless. That was my hope. I know cheap eBay, Amazon header, what do you expect? Anyway, so first off, I was trying to get it in there and... I couldn't because it kept wanting to go on the other side of the drive shaft. So I pulled the drive shaft out, which we'll have to look at that too. Um, and it still wouldn't go. So then I'm going to try clearancing it and still wouldn't get by the frame. And if you look at it, I mean, that thing is right in line with the frame. I know it's hard to see, um, but it's dead even. So we're going to drop her down and see what she looks like. Um, like I said, the build quality of these headers is nice. Oh, uh, but the. The fit is tight, so we'll see what happens when we drop it down. The other thing, I was struggling and struggling to get my bolt started. I'm in there and I'm like, you know, why can't I get this brand new bolt started? Well, I don't know if these are metric or they're 3 8 or what, but uh, if you look at that compared to the old one, yeah, the old one's a 5 16 18. It's actually a standard thread, not a metric. Um, luckily, I had bolts. A couple of them I had to use Allen head cap screws because, you know, the old bolts had this smaller bolt head for a reason to clearance the header. So let's drop her down and see what we got. We're going to do this uh, quickly. All right, all right, all right. And um, we are sitting on our motor mount bolt. That's. No bueno. All right, uh, round two. All right, so now we're down where the motor mount's supposed to be. I can't tell if that's hitting or not. It's damn close. Ugh. Get off. All right, so to the transmission, we have a slight gap, and to the frame, I think we might be just touching. Uh, which I don't think I'd be an issue because when I pulled the pace setters, I think they were rubbing too. Um, yeah, it, it, if it's touching, it's barely, but I mean, it is tight as you can see to the transmission. I think our drive shift should clear. Um, we might have to do a little, you know, uh, like we like on the other one where self clearance, we might have to clearance it a little bit. But uh, other than that, I mean, it, it fits. It's just very, very tight. So, it might be rubbing a little bit. Yeah, I'm not really that worried about it for the simple fact that when I looked at our pace setter headers, um, this side, nah, yeah, this side, it has a mark where these were touching the frame, and I could never notice it, 
in the like 10 years these were on the truck so i'm not really concerned about it um yeah so just getting that thing in was a complete bear um wouldn't surprise me we got to do that over here too so i'll get the motor mount tightened up over here and then we will hop over and do this on the passenger side um which i will try and stuff her in there first but at least we don't have to drop the drive shaft again All right, so got the uh, passenger side header in just as we did the driver side. Uh, really, I just had a brain fart. If I would have been thinking, I would have just pulled that thing out of the motor mounts and we never would have had to ding this one header up like we did. Not that it's awful noticeable. They definitely look a lot better. Um, the fact that they're stainless is awesome. Underneath the truck, our drive shaft is back in and see our big counterweight. This is what was hitting on the previous headers this counterweight right here well i you know put the drive shaft in up there and then held it up and saw where it was and yeah now we have good rotation so everything's good there also our pipes going back everything is in looking good everything you know it's not hitting any of the frame rails all that um so i'm very happy with the fit and finish of all this stuff and it looks like uh looks like we might need a u-joint or something right there it's a a little moist maybe we need a seal i don't know we'll have to investigate that later all right so uh there's only one thing left to do is to start the thing now i'm not going to rev it up and all that because well it's open headers and it's late but we can at least start her and listen to her car So she is sounding good. Um, very excited. Uh, man, sounds awesome. Uh, I wasn't going to rev it up at all, but I don't know if you guys can see that light over there. They're out in the fields uh, spreading manure, so I uh, figured I could get away with one little rev or something. Maybe I'll come out tomorrow and give you, you know, idle and all that like I did when I uh, took the old exhaust off. So those pipes underneath the truck are not um, done because I'm very happy with the quality of these headers don't get me wrong at all they they're great um they're a little harder to install than the pace headers the pace headers just kind of slide right in but if i would have if i would have been on my a game and thinking right i would have just unbolted that motor mount and just slid it right in probably wouldn't have had to remove the drive shaft and all that kind of stuff but the fit and finish of these things is good they do rub the frame a little bit but so did our pace setters like i told you guys before right here and right here so i'm not worried about it really to put a long tube header on these trucks your only option used to be the pace setter so now there's these stainless ones they're non-magnetic non-magnetic 305 uh or 304 304 is not supposed to be magnetic but if you get some junk shit from china sometimes it is um but anyway yeah very happy with everything definitely the flange is even a little thicker than the pace setter but when you look at that pipe down below uh that y pipe you definitely i definitely think they just took the pace setter design and said hey let's make this out of stainless um the one the pace setters i have were ceramic coated and after what is this 12 years it didn't hold up but the truck has lived its entire life outside so you know i don't know if i can blame them for that um but they even the Y pipe underneath fits great. But it's not done because one, I can't get the O2 sensor out of the old one. I got some penetrating oil, have to try some heat or something, but I gotta get that out. And like I said, the fit and finish of those things is great. 
and I'm not going to ruin it with these things and not being able to get anything apart if I ever have to. So I'm going to wait and get some three inch band clamps. So those, um, I, I forget what the primaries are, like inch and five eighths or something like that. Um, and then they go into a collector and then they're three inch and then we will go from three inch into a muffler into two and a half inch tailpipes. So anyway, guys, the truck's coming along. She's, she's sounding right. We're going to get all our exhaust problems fixed and then move on to whatever else we got. I did fix the vacuum leak as well. Put a little plug on that. Uh, so yeah, she's coming together. Also got to put the intake back on, but I just don't feel like it right now. As I said, it is getting late. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, like the video. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Get out in your garage, get the wrenching on your truck.